Hello, welcome to Clarity Design. We are in animation mode. Uh, in the last tutorial we looked at, we um, did a basic animation on this uh, ball type shape, um, just changing the color and uh, moving it. Um, and we want to take a little bit of a closer look at how we can get control of the animation and give it real character um, and get more control over how this is moving between uh, 1 and 12. So the idea that uh, you can change the behavior uh, that the computer applies to the in-between frames, um, between the keyframes. So to do that, we use the graph editor. Here's the graph editor. Um, you can find the graph editor in window as well, up in uh, animation graph editor if you don't want to have it uh, docked in this way. Um, and immediately when you open it up, if you've got the object selected with the keyframes on it, you will see it in the graph. If you don't, then the graph will be empty. So select the object, um, make sure that you've got um, the uh, area that you want to manipulate uh, viewable by selecting the channels that you want to look at. Um, so in this case, we'd probably want to just have selected the Translate Y and the Rotate Z, which are the two uh, channels that have been keyframed uh, actively. Um, if you wanted to, you could have a look at all the translates, all the uh, rotates, but if you have it just selected on P-Sphere, then you'll get everything, um, which may be useful, but most of the time this means that you're uh, having to contend with um, uh, keyframe points that are directly under one another. Um, so it's not the best way of doing things. Now, um, to manipulate things inside this graph window is fairly easy. You just use the Move tool or the Scale tool. They both work in the same way as they do in other windows. So if you select um, and press middle click and drag, um, then it will allow you to move things around. So I'll just Control Z to undo that. And the same with the Scale tool. Um, if you uh, select, let's just select those keyframes there. And this time, wherever I click, is where it will scale from. So if I click here, um, it will scale out from that point. Um, so the scale is quite useful. So if I wanted to make um, the uh, just the uh, rotate, sorry, the rotate Z a little bit longer, I could just click, uh, select that area there, click and pull it out, and it will change the shape of the animation. Um, so it just change those keyframes a little bit. Um, so that's how to interact uh, with the objects on here. You'll see that you've got these uh, little uh, handles here. These are called tangents. And these tangents help control the animation curve. So you can see this one is actively controlling this curve. Now before I go any further, I'm just gonna um, take a, uh, a snapshot of this. Um, so I'm gonna uh, buffer uh, the curve. So just send that into the buffer. And that means that if I uh, make some make a mess of it, I can get back to where I am at the moment. Um, so I've just buffered that curve. It allows me to play around. So I can move around. Oh, let's just move that off scale and move it to move. So middle click, drag, and I can change the shape of this curve now. So what we're looking at is the rotation, which is changing. So you can see it's just curving back really slowly back to the point there. Um, so I just need to display a few more frames so that I can time slide it. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Another thing that you can do is uh, just along here, each of these do something slightly different. Um, we can uh, straighten out, we can square things off, um, we can round things back down again. Um, and uh, one of the most useful ones I've, uh, I've found is this break tangents. Uh, so this allows me to break apart the two tangents so that they're no longer connected, uh, meaning that you can get uh, steep points happening in your uh, animation curve. Now that will look quite different now. It's really going to look like it bounces off that end point of the rotation. Let's just move that view so you can see it a little bit better. Um, so it really looks like it's bouncing off that uh, rotation point now. It's almost like it's hitting something. Um, so really useful uh, little thing to be able to break those tangents apart and play around with it. Now we quite like this uh, as it is, but let's, uh, let's say that we've done something totally messed it up and want to go back. All we need to do is click on this one and it'll reset that curve to where I buffered it before. So uh, maybe I didn't like what I did and I'm back to where I was before. Um, there's loads along here that you can play around with, but probably the next one that I want to show you is about infinities. Um, so what we can do is if we've got a little cyclical animation like this that we want to go again and again and again, uh, we can start playing around with that. So inside keys, you can find, oh sorry, inside curves, you can find uh, 
pre-infinity and post-infinity. Um, we'll just look at post-infinity. Pre-infinity is before the moment of animation. Post-infinity is afterwards. Um, so post-infinity, we can cycle, cycle with offset, oscillate, linear constraint. Now some of these are up here as well. So you've got um, pre-infinity and post-infinity, post-infinity cycle. And what it does is it basically, um, let's just extend this so we can see more of it. Uh, it's basically just repeating this animation again and again and again. Now, we've just done it on the uh, rotation, not on the rest of them, so I've just realized I've done that. So um, so it'll be down here doing its little rotation wobble, uh, but because I didn't have the other, so it'll just do the little rotation there. Um, because I didn't have the uh, other elements selected, it's uh, not done the rotation, uh, it's not done the other channels. Okay, so we're massively spaced out now. We're miles away from our curve and we want to get back to it quickly. We can use some of these view options up here. We could center the timeline and we can uh, zoom in on the curve area that we're interested in. Um, so uh, we could keep playing around with this forever, but the easiest thing for you to do is to go and actually play around for yourself and see what you can uh, see what you can do for yourself and have some fun with, uh, with animating and, and playing around with the animation. Yeah.